What's up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. Now in today's tutorial, we'll be covering how to make this cool lower thirds that pops out of the bottom of the video, like so. Really simple and all done in Premiere. And the reason we're doing it all in Premiere is to avoid After Effects, because we don't need to use it all the time, it's really effective, but hey, we gotta make a lot of videos really fast, so let's do it this way this time. But please excuse the scratches on my face. I can't tell you how much I love my cats. They're healing up pretty nicely, it's been about a week, but you should have seen them when it first happened. It was great. I cannot confess how much I love my cats. They're the best. You may be able to see one of the cats in the background. Right there. There she is. Lily. What a good kitty. And if you're too lazy to follow the tutorial, just download the project file down below. There's a link in the description. Just like leave a like on the video or something if you do download it. So without further ado, let's jump over to Premiere Pro and make this thing. So now we're in uh, Premiere Pro and as you can see, it's really simple. I have some footage laid out here and there's a color mat, a color mat, and a nested sequence. So it scrolls up, goes over like that, and reveals my name. In this case, it could be anything you want. Your name, something else, doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and put this thing together. So, as always, I'm going to start a new sequence. In Premiere Pro, you'll see your project panel. Um, and the bottom of the project panel, you'll see this little new button. It's called New Item. Click the New Item button and click New Sequence. I'm sure you already know how to do this. I just like to cover this stuff because it's pretty helpful for other people. So, in the New Sequence, we'll go to Digital SLR, drop down on this, 1080p at 30 frames a second. Let's go to Settings, change it around a little bit. Let's do Time Base, 60 frames per second. 60 and then frame size is 3840 by 2160 because we want this to be 4k because I do all my videos in 4k you can do yours in HD if you need to and the sequence name will be L3 RD lower third so lower thirds you know whatever it's pretty much lower third and click OK we have our new sequence here we need to create a few things to go along with this lower third so right click inside of your project bin and do new item color map um, click OK, and then it's going to pop up another dialog box that lets you choose the color of the color mat, which is kind of nice. Let's drag it down to a nice red. Click OK, and go OK one more time. Right click, new, color mat once again, um, and let's change this one to blue, just like so. Now, drag one of these color mats onto the screen. The first color is the first one that shows up. The second color is the final color with your text on it. So color mat, this is going to be our red one. But now it's full screen red. We don't want, to be, want it to be full screen red. So go to your effects window inside of Premiere Pro. My effects is right here where I can type in effects. If you don't see effects, really simple. This is a very easy step to follow anything. Click window and scroll down to effects. Boom, opens up the effects window inside of Premiere Pro. Then we're gonna type crop, which this is how we're gonna crop it down to the bottom and also do the little up and down motion you'll see in the beginning. So once you drag your crop effect onto the layer, it opens up crop inside of your effect panel. If you don't see your effect control panel, same as before, go to window and effect controls. Opens that up and we will take, we'll scroll down and take the top crop right here, drop this down and crop it down to about, I don't know, 92%. Nope, let's do 92 1.4% works for me click OK now let's zoom in on our timeline with this little drag bar right here and at about one second let's go one second right here we're going to keyframe the crop this is where it lands finally so keyframe the crop so hit this little stopwatch right here toggle animation click it it creates a keyframe then we'll scroll back in time you can use this scroll bar or you can use this scroll bar scroll back in time and crop it all the way to 100%. Now this is that animation where it goes up like that. Super simple. Then what we're gonna do is right click, ease out on this keyframe, right click this keyframe, and ease in. Now that makes the animation look a little smoother. So if you play it, it just looks a little nicer. Now you can actually control the animation even more by using these little vertices right here. Um, you can pull this in, pull this in, which gives the animation a little more dynamicness or whatever you want to call it it works just like so works really well now we need to do the outcrop so I'd say scroll down to about four seconds we will click this little keyframe option add or remove keyframe scroll down a little bit more and move this back up to 100% which creates another keyframe 
for it to go away. So we'll right click this keyframe, the third one, and do ease out. Right, uh, right click the final keyframe and do ease in. And do the same thing as before, grab these little vertices right here and move it in. So we have this full animation right here, just like that. Stays for a second and then goes away. Now what we need to do is uh, let's put some footage behind this color mat so we can see what it's gonna look like on screen. Let's move it up in our layer. So go to from V1, let's move it up to V2. I have footage here already in my project bin. Just some of my drone stock footage that I have. And let's put it about right here. And it's just like that, probably a little further where the drone footage is actually moving. Just like so. Then we'll click the color mat and go to our opacity in our effect controls and change the blending mode to, let's say, darken. Just like so. So it's kind of like see-through, but not see-through. You can still see the stuff under, it looks pretty nice. Now let's take our second color mat and put it onto the timeline right here. And what we'll do is we'll copy and paste the crop from our first layer right here. So Command C or Control C on your keyboard, copy this crop and then paste it on here. So Control V or Command V if you're on a Mac or a PC. And boom, we have the same thing. So it goes up and then the other one goes up. And let's time this perfectly. So it goes up right here. The other one should start right about there. Just like so, let's change this color mat, the blue color mat, to darken as well in the opacity section right here, darken. Then we'll actually take the first color mat because there's two of them right now. We need the red to disappear when the blue is coming on. So we'll take the red layer, hover over the end of the layer, and drag it back in time. Just like so. We'll hover back over the end of the layer, right click, apply default transition, which is a fade away. We'll move this transition back a little bit. And just like so. And you know what? After all, I'm not really digging the darken option. Let's change this uh, blend mode to multiply instead. I think that looks a little nicer on screen. We'll probably make it disappear a little later in time. Just right there. So you can time it however you want. Um, that's about it. So now we need text on screen. So inside of Premiere Pro, open up your toolbar with window tools and then you'll see this little type tool right here. Click the type tool, then hover over your screen. And once you hover over your screen, you click and you can type. So I'm gonna type at Maxwell Ridgeway. My font is defaulted to something else. So in your effect control window, you can highlight the font like so and then change the source text right here with the text tool. I'm going to scroll this down or type Proxima Nova. It is a font that I really enjoy. Um, you can add it from Typekit or I will send you a link down below in the description so you can download it for free. I'm pretty sure it's for free. Don't mark my words on that. Okay, so I'm going to do a bold italic, just like so. Then scroll down even further in the effect controls and use the position transform tag to move my text around. Now what we need is those logos we saw before on the screen. So I used a Twitter and an Instagram logo. Now I suggest getting on Google and typing Instagram logo PNG in images and changing the search results to large image to find a nice high, re high resolution logo to drag and drop into here. Like I said before, I've already downloaded the Instagram and Twitter logo. I'm gonna drag it into my project bin and dump them onto my timeline just like so. Like that match it up to my text, move the Instagram logo above. And right now they're giant logos because I did download a high resolution file. Um, so I'm gonna click the Instagram logo, go to our effect controls and hit the scale, scale it down to about 13%. And also scale the Twitter logo down to about 13%. And I will use the position tag in the effect controls to move them into position, move them into position on my timeline or on my screen in this case. Cool. Now, last step is, or one of the last steps, is to highlight all three of these layers, the Instagram, the Twitter, and your text layer, right click and then do nest, which turns them into all a single layer inside of themselves, like a pre-comp in After Effects or something. Um, click OK. Let's move this down 
to the front of this first blue color mat, or the second blue color mat. We'll copy and paste the crop once again, Command C or Control C on your keyboard if you're on a PC versus a Mac, um, and then Control C, Control V on the nested sequence to paste that crop on there. Now the crop is exactly the same as the blue color mat, so it looks like it's fading on or like transitioning on with that color mat, which is super nice. So, if we play this back, we can see that the red goes up, blue goes up, reveals the text and the logos. Now if you want to change the text or the logos, all you do is double click the nested sequence, opens up that sequence. We can move the Instagram thing to be closer to the this, move Twitter over to be closer to this, to look a little nicer. We can even make them smaller. Let's make them like 10% on screen, or 10, per 10 scale. Go back to L third, just like so. And you have this nice lower thirds for all your videos. Now you can save this Premiere Pro file because Premiere Pro can open up multiple files now, save it somewhere, Google Drive or something. And every time you do a video, you just open the file up inside of Premiere and drag and drop it into your timeline. And you'll have it every single time. It is as simple as that. That is how you make this cool little lower thirds inside of Premiere Pro. No After Effects required. As always, I'm Max. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being a part of the channel. I really hope this helped you out. Feel free to leave this video a like. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think. Thought, or did you like it, or something. Something like that. I don't know. It doesn't matter. As always, I guess I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace.